Mana dorks are a community name for creatures as you can tap for mana. Getting extra mana is a very powerful effect, so it's no wonder that so many of these cards have traditionally been really good. However, not every card can be great, and sometimes cards don't quite live up to their legacy. So today, we're going to go over some of the worst mana dorks in the game. And at number 10, we have Honored Hierarch. This is a 1-1 human druid with a mana cost of 1 green. It has Renown 1, meaning whenever it deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't Renown, it becomes Renown and you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Basically, this just means it gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter the first time it hits an opponent, but not after that. It also has the ability where, if it's Renown, it has Vigilance, meaning that it doesn't tap whenever it attacks, and it has the ability where you can tap it to add 1 mana of any color. Now, High Arc misses out on a lot of things that make Mana Dork so powerful. Being a 1 Mana Dork means that you're usually able to make 3 mana on turn 2 with the additional land you play that turn. However, High Arc can't do that. On your turn 2, High Arc needs to attack to try and get its Renown off. Now, this does mean that it can get you to 4 mana on turn 3, which is the role that a lot of 2 Mana Dorks fill. But High Arc has a few extra disadvantages. Namely, it's very inconsistent. If your opponent has a blocker, you better bet they're going to try and stop you from both getting a better creature and getting more mana each turn. The fact is, cards like Lenar Elves, or even weaker mana dorks like Whisper of the Wilds, are better ways of ensuring fast mana ramps specifically because you never have to put them into the red zone to try and get their benefits. High Arc isn't a bad card, and in fact is probably one of the most powerful one mana mana dorks in the game in terms of what it can do. A 2-2 with Vigilance for one mana is nothing to scoff at. The fundamental issue here is that Renown is a bit weak of a mechanic. Unless the creature has evasion itself, it's very hard to ensure a specific creature gets through for combat damage. Or at least hard enough that your opponent can probably stop you if they want to. If you're relying on Hierarch for your mana acceleration, having to be disturbed so easily will make your entire deck way less consistent. The upside of being able to tap for any color of mana and getting you a 2-2 with Vigilance isn't enough of an upside for the massive ask of needing to hit your opponent before you can do anything with the card. The card is honestly fairly close to being good, which is why it barely makes it onto this list. But it's certainly not a good dork. And at number 9, we have Oasis Ritualist. This is a 2-4 Naga Druid with a mana cost of 3 and 1 green. It is the abilities where you can tap it to add 1 mana of any color, or you can tap it and exert it to add 2 mana of any one color. Exerting a creature means that the creature won't untap during your next untap step. Now, Ritualist is an okay mana dork, but it's just not particularly exceptional. A 4 mana dork that only taps for 1 mana isn't very good. Though, being able to tap for 2 mana is better than most other cards at this cost. However, you can only do this every other turn, which is a hefty downside. Still, the ability to choose to get an extra mana on a turn is a powerful one. They can let you cast spells you normally otherwise wouldn't if their cost was a single mana over budget. For example, this can let you cast a 7 mana spell on turn 5, which is nothing to scoff at. Still, this really isn't all that worth it. Cheaper dorks like Lenora Elves can get you there much faster by simply asking you to cast more of them, as early as turn 3 in Magical Christmas Land scenario where you draw exactly the cards you need, though turn 4 is a far more reasonable turn to shoot for. The point here is that this isn't a particularly exceptional ramp spell, and there's not much of a reason to play it over cheaper, more efficient ramp in most formats. While the card is certainly more interesting than more straightforward options, that doesn't make it better. The card's kind of hard to balance, honestly. If it were a 3 mana spell, there's a chance that it might have actually been too good in the format, as this specific standard didn't have any dorks at 1 mana. This would mean it would let you hit a 6 drop on turn 4, which is honestly a lot scarier just because it happens a whole turn cycle earlier. However, 4 is just too high of a cost, especially back in our Devastation standard, which happened to be dominated by aggro decks. And at number 8, we have Kozilek's Channeler. This is a 4-4 Eldrazi with a mana cost of 5. It is the ability where you can tap it to add 2 colorless mana to your mana pool. This is very similar to the last card on this list, but Ritualist has a few important upsides over Channeler. Mainly, the Ritualist just costs one less mana, which means it's more likely to help you ramp into powerful spells. While ramp is less consistent, ramp decks are usually built around turning the corner by slamming a huge card into play and stabilizing from there. As such, a burst of mana on one turn can be more useful than having more consistent stream of mana over several turns. In the case of Ritualist, it only skips mana production for a single turn, so you'll be able to follow up soon anyway. There's also the fact that Ritualist makes colored mana, so it can ramp you into far more spells than Channeler can. The final nail in the coffin for Channeler, however, is that Hedron Archive exists in the exact same standard. This is a 4 mana artifact that can be tapped for 2 colorless, or lets you pay 2, tap it, and sacrifice it to draw 2 cards. Archive blows Channeler out of the water in basically every way. Not only does it generate the same amount of mana for less, 
it also isn't a creature, but rather a mana rock. Mana rocks being artifacts can be used the turn they come into play, meaning Archive sort of refunds to the mana spent to cast it. Now, you may say that the ability to sack to draw cards is also a strict upgrade over Channeler, but this isn't necessarily the case. See, Channeler is a 4-4 body on top of being a source of mana, which is something that's not true of Archive. In a way, you can look at being a 4-4 body being a trade-off for not letting you draw extra cards. The issue is that, while this isn't strictly worse, it is usually worse than just drawing more cards. You see, ramp decks are full of expensive, powerful, and hugely impactful cards. Drawing into them is exceptionally powerful in the late game when you're running out of gas. And since you're cracking into the late game, there's a good chance that you'll be able to play the cards you drew off of Archive that turn. In a head-to-head -head game, two decks that were running Archive or Chandler in each other's place would be largely even. But Archive would put one deck over the other in a lot of games, and more games in Channeler would win by being a 4-4 body. Archive was a very powerful ramp spell that saw playing standard fairly heavily, whereas Channeler has never done anything in any format. And at number 7, we have Dawnheart Rejuvenator. This is a 2-4 human warlock with a mana cost of 3 and 1 green. It has the abilities where, whenever it enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life, and you can tap it to add 1 mana of any color. This is an incredibly expensive mana dork and this is something we'll come back to a few times throughout the course of this video. Getting extra mana is an effect that's better the earlier you play it. There are a few reasons for this. First off, you naturally get more mana as the game goes on, so getting a bit of extra mana is proportionally less impactful. There's also the issue that your opponent has had more time to get established and has more likely to have an answer to whatever you're trying to do. To compensate for this, most more expensive mana dorks do one of a couple of things. Usually, they make more mana, letting you play very expensive cards that generate even more value. However, sometimes they do other things, such as Battery Bearer, which also draws you cards when you cast sufficiently expensive spells. Dawnheart has the upside of gaining you life when it enters, which might just be one of the worst upsides you can have. Mana dorks that draw you cards have the ability to sort of run away with the game by letting you snowball in value in cards. Gaining life does at least help you not die, but it doesn't progress your game state. It's certainly better that it does gain you life, as it means you're more likely to live and actually be able to use it to ramp something into play, but if you had to choose between this and a mana dork that was cheaper, you'd choose the cheaper dork every time. The card is at least serviceable and limited, and that's honestly all it was designed for. It's a bit player that helps earn decks and draft and sealed, something that's true for most of the cards we're going to talk about today. Still, it's hard to imagine too many players were happy to be drafted this over any other ramp spell wizards could have printed in the format. And at number 6, we have Chandra's Ember Cat. This is a 2-2 elemental cat with a mana cost of 1 and 1 red. It has the ability where you can tap it to add 1 red, but you can only spend it to cast an elemental spell or a Chandra Planeswalker spell. This is the first in a long line of dorks we'll see on this list. Dorks that can only use mana on very specific spells. This is extremely limiting, and the upside of making extra mana isn't, alone, really worth it. The thing is, even in an elemental tribal deck, you'll be playing cards that aren't elementals. You'll be relying on some number of instants and sorceries for removal, and likely even play in a few artifacts and enchantments to make your deck better. This isn't the end of the world or anything, but the big issue is that you could just be playing better mana dorks in the card slots that do work with all those cards. The only thing stopping you from playing any of the green mana dorks in your deck is that, well, those are green. If you're a mono red deck, you can't play those cards. So Ember Cat is a more restricted version of a mana dork for a color that's not known for being able to ramp. The weird thing about this is that the set the card was printed in, Magic Court Set 2020, had an elemental theme in the Teamer colors. Teamer is shorthand for green, blue, red color combination, which you may have noticed has green in it. So there's no real reason to play Ember Cat as your mana acceleration, especially when the deck had access to crazy cards like Risen Reef. This is another limited focus card. The thing is, sometimes you won't be able to draft green mana acceleration, or you may be playing blue, red elementals or something like that. And in that case, Ember Cat is an acceptable card. There's just no real use for the card in any constructed format. And at number 5, we have Cultivator Drone. This is a 2-3 Eldrazi drone with a mana cost of 2 and 1 blue. It has Devoid, meaning it's colorless despite costing blue mana to cast. It is the ability where you can tap it to add 1 colorless mana, but you can only spend this mana on a colorless spell to activate the ability of a colorless permanent or to pay the cost that contains a colorless mana. Drone is the second version of a card like Ember Cat on this list. This time it was designed to support the Eldrazi in Oath of the Gatewatch, who were huge, expensive, colorless creatures. Drone was designed to help you cast these giant threats, though it was also a bit lacking. The format has much, much better ramp spells available, though they were in green rather than blue. Oath Standard had cards like Whisper of the Wilds for a 2-drop mana dork that scaled its mana production and explosive vegetation at 4 that ramped you for 2 basic lands. 
The only upside Drone has over these cards is that it puts a bot in the field in the meantime, but this generally isn't worth it. Mana Dorks being creatures is actually a downside, as it means they're easier to remove. Creature removal is the most common type of removal in the game, and having your mana ramp be susceptible to this kind of interaction makes your game plan harder to pull off. There's a reason the cheapest type of land ramp is found at 2 mana with cards like Rampant Growth, or have an additional downside such as cards like Exploration relying on you having other cards that actually generate any extra mana. Anyway, the point here is that getting a body off of your dork just isn't all that good, and is usually actually a downside rather than an upside. Drone is one of the worst ways to try and play Eldrazi early, which is why Eldrazi decks in every format they've ever been in have relied on Green Ramp or other forms of mana acceleration instead of cards like Drone. And at number 4, we have Warden of Geometries. This is a 2-3 Eldrazi drone with a mana cost of 4. It has Vigilance and the ability where you can tap it for 1 colorless mana. This is the worst 4 mana dork we've seen by far. It trades the other abilities at the rest of its ilk have for Vigilance, which is one of the worst abilities you could have on a dork like this. Vigilance on a dork is a pretty interesting ability. Dorks usually have to choose between attacking and making mana on a turn, and this allows them to forego this trade off by attacking and then making mana on a main phase too. The issue with Warden of Geometries is that it's just a very bad creature. Tons of 3 mana creatures will be able to block Warden, kill it, and survive combat. The average stat line for a 3 mana creature is 3-3 and most creatures will either have a slightly better stat line and not really have any good abilities, or have a stat line that's good or worse and have several useful abilities. The point here being just that Warden is a really bad stat line for its costs, meaning that attacking will very rarely be worth it. This isn't even an honored Hierarch situation, as Hierarch is at least a good body for its costs once it hits Renown. Warden is a mix of two okay effects, a Vigilance Attacker and a Dork, but it simply is far too expensive on both fronts to be worth playing. Again, this is mostly limited filler, and I need to play more expensive Eldrazi more often and also add in a body to the board. Still, this isn't exactly a high pick in a draft. And at number 3, we have Circle of Elders. This is a 2-4 human shaman with a mana cost of 2 and 2 green. It has Vigilance and the ability where you can tap it to add 3 colorless mana, but only if you have creatures with a combined power of 8 or more. Circles is very similar to Warden, but for some reason, they decided to not make it an effective dork. Formidable, the ability word for the must-have creatures with power 8 or more, isn't the hardest thing to pull off. The thing is, most cards that work with Formidable give you effects that help you push for game once you get there. This makes sense as you have to have at least an okay board state to have a total of 8 power. What you're not trying to do once you hit 8 mana, more likely than not, is play even more big powerful spells. You'd rather get extra mana on your way up to that point and then do something like pump your board, give your creatures combat abilities, or deal direct damage once you do get there. Cards like Dragon Whisperer let you do things like make 4-4 four, four dragons once you get a total of 8 power, which lets you go from a good board state to an amazing board state rather quickly. Circle of Elders goes in the exact wrong direction. It requires you get a decent board state, a total of 6 other power outside of itself, and then only gives you extra mana once you finally get there. It does give you a nice amount of mana, as getting 3 mana for a 4 mana dork is kind of a crazy rate. The thing is, you're probably not going to be able to actually spend that mana on too many useful things at that point in the game. If you're trying to ramp into big, crazy threats, you're not going to be able to turn Circle on. If you're just trying to play a normal mid-range game, then most of your cards will probably already be in play by the time you get Circle of Elders working. Circle is a potentially very powerful card, but it just sits at an awkward spot where it can't quite slot into any strategy. And at number 2, we have Witch Engine. This is a 4-4 horror with a mana cost of 5 and 1 black. It has Swamp Walk, meaning it can't be blocked if the defending player controls a swamp, and has the ability where it can be tapped in order to add 4 mana, but then the target opponent gains control of which engine. This card is extremely polarizing. Getting 4 mana is a lot, and honestly not even that bad for a card that costs 6 mana. Giving your opponent a 4-4 with Swamp Walk is quite the downside, however, especially since if you're on this card, you're probably playing black. This means you'll probably have a swamp, and your opponent will have a basically unblockable threat on their side of the board. They could also use it for mana and give it back to you, but that's fairly unlikely to happen. This is a high risk, high reward card, but the risk is just a little too high. Ramp decks are often at pretty low life when they start casting their big threats, as they usually don't spend any time putting up a defense until the late game. They're more focused on just getting more mana to play their big threats. An unblockable 4-4 is always a bit scary, but it's far scarier when you're at 10 or less life, and it can put you away in just a couple of swings. Of course, you could play the card in a non-ramp deck to try to get around this, but it's unlikely to be as good there. 6 mana is just a ton to pay for any effect, and if you're not trying to play a 10 mana card with it, it's not likely to be worth playing over a more standard 6 drop threat. Which Engine gives maybe the highest amount of mana of any card of its kind, and that's not the only thing you have to look at when analyzing this kind of card. 
However, there is one card that completely blows it out of the water in terms of being a bad mana dork. And at number one, we have Lotus Guardian. This is a 4-4 dragon artifact creature with a mana cost of seven. It has flying, meaning it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach, and it has the ability where you can tap it to add one mana of any color. So, where to begin? Just about everything about this card is absolutely awful. A 4-4 flyer for seven is an abysmal raid that most magic players wouldn't be caught dead paying for. Paying any amount of mana above four for a card that can only tap for one mana is completely out of the question. And paying more than two mana is often enough for a card to be excluded from decks unless the rest of the cards have extremely powerful abilities. Guardian does almost nothing. It's honestly better to use a 4-4 beater and just ignore the ability to tap it for mana since it comes in far too late to actually ramp you into any other cards. In fact, many targets for ramp decks have cost 7 mana in the past. For example, Dragonlord Atarka was played in red-green ramp decks during its time in Standard as one of the few top ends for the deck and is kind of sad to compare the two cards side by side. Atarka has Flying and Trample, making it even better at attacking, has twice the stats, and deals 5 damage to your opponent's board when you play it. Yes, Atarka came out years after Power Creep, but there were still far better cards even at its time. In the exact same set, Garden was competing with cards like Rhea Dawnbringer, which for two more mana had better stats and reanimated a creature on each of your turns. Molimo, Marl Sorcerer, who had evasion and far better stats, and cards like the Elder Dragon Cycle. There was never a time in Magic where this rate was acceptable. It's just that it's gotten even more laughably bad with time. Wizards will never print a worse mana dork than Guardian. I really just have no idea what they were thinking when they made this card a rare in Invasion. All right, and that's the list. Are there new cards that we may have missed or have any ideas for future videos just like this one? If so, please let us know down in the comments below.